Uh, my name is Edie Stone. I'm the director of the Green Thumb Program, which is a city program um, in New York that helps about community volunteers create and maintain community gardens, mostly on city-owned property. And what we're going to do, actually, you didn't say what we were going to do. Okay. <laughs> well, before I do that, I'll introduce myself. Right. Um, some of you know me. My name is Kenneth Williams. You can call me Kenny. Um, I'm the outreach coordinator for all the Manhattan community gardens within the Green Dump program under the jurisdiction and support of New York City's Park and Recreation. Um, and today we're here to engage you in asset-based community development mapping. And um, hopefully we'll te tweak your perspective a little. What are you guys doing? Um, tweak your perspective a little on how to approach community um, development mapping um, goals and initiatives within the context of community gardens. And um, Edie will start off with an intro, kind of a preface to um, to what will lead us into the workshop, the main workshop um, today. Okay, I'm very happy to talk like that. <laughs> um, so I just want to quickly describe what our program is, give you some context, let you know what we do, and then uh, we'll move right <coughs> to I'll give Kenny a chance to talk a little bit about his experience since he's been working there with me. And uh, then we'll move right into the to an, an interactive activity, so we won't just be talking at you the whole time. Okay. So um, Green Thumb is a program of, like I said, of the City of New York Department of Parks and Recreation. Um, we started in the 70s. Um, most gardens that we have were first created in the 70s when there was a lot of divestment in New York. A lot of people left. A lot of landlords burned down their buildings because they didn't want to pay their taxes. It's very hard to imagine now, I know, but even when I first moved to New York in the 80s, even in places like the East Village, there were blocks and blocks with nobody in any of the buildings. Um, so this is a picture from that era. There's a little community garden there. You can see the building behind it is abandoned and everything else is a lot of this stuff. And this is basically because the city just walked away. They, they didn't have the funding, they didn't have any sort of support for at a neighborhood level. Um, the famous headline then was Ford to uh, Mayor Koch drop dead because <laughs> the federal government wouldn't give any money to the city to take care of this. So community gardens basically were people from the neighborhoods initially taking over these lots um, without any sort of city recognition, no licenses, no anything, just a totally grassroots guerrilla gardening action. And Green Thumb was created in 1978 to actually issue licenses to these community groups for a dollar a year in order to encourage people to take on this very big project of cleaning up and maintaining a garden on, this, on a vacant lot. Um, so different neighborhoods could do what they want with the gardens that they have. have. Um, obviously now when gardens are 30 years old, there's less input into the design although we do have new ones as well. Um, most of the our guidelines are very broad, so if you want, you can make a garden that's mostly for food production, so if you have enough sun, you can build a garden with raised beds for food, or you could build a, have a garden that's more of a passive place space. There's no, or relaxation space, there's no real requirement. And this picture is also illustrative of more or less the size of most of the gardens that we have. They're usually mid-block, uh, surrounded by buildings, 50, 50 by 100 feet. Um, the main thing that's important about our gardens is that they're managed by a group of neighborhood individuals, not necessarily an organization, not necessarily any particular governance structure. Any 10 people can apply for, to manage a piece of land. So this uh, map shows you where the gardens are. It's a little light. Maybe Kenny can show them which neighborhoods those are. Yeah. Clusters, uptown Manhattan, clusters in Brooklyn, and two. There's and, nothing um, that down. Yeah, and a few in the Bronx, or a lot in the Bronx, actually, right. and Queens. Right, so it's basically the neighborhoods that if you know about New York or you hear about New York, the South Bronx, Bedford, Stuyvesant, the East Village, neighborhoods that were really divested from by the city and uh, had a lot of abandonment is where there were more lots and also where there was more need, so there were more gardens there. 
And if by contrast, if you look at the map, this is the map of where traditional parks are. The, where the gardens are, this is Brooklyn, the gardens are here. So it's pretty much as far away as from a traditional park as you can get. <laughs> and that, in, the, in Manhattan, that's Central Park, but most of the gardens that Kenny works with are up there and all the way down there. So it's also illustrates that people just kind of said, hey, we don't have any parks, let's make some. Um, which I find very inspiring. So our program, we basically do workshops, we distribute materials, um, we help people with uh, organizing, and we also help people with getting licenses to do the projects that they want to do. So we act as an interface between the city and the, the community groups. And our um, we try to make sure everything that we do is um, training people in environmental sustainability and also um, encouraging environmental sustainability. Like, we don't use G or distribute GMO seeds, and we haven't for a long time before. People were really talking about that. And we encourage people to build rainwater harvesting systems as opposed to using groundwater. Basically, it's just, we give away stuff that we want to use as a teaching tool. Um, so people, you take the stuff that we give out, they arrange it as they wish to some of the various things that we give away, which we always give away in the context of a workshop. So gardeners come to another person's garden, they learn about the other gardens, they learn about that neighborhood, and then they actually participate in some sort of hands-on activity and pick up their materials. Um, workshops can be everything from integrative pest management to birdhouse building. We let the gardeners decide which workshops they want to have. and. A lot of times gardeners teach workshops for other gardeners, which I also think is uh, really um, good for the for everybody involved. I mean, it's good for the, for the self-esteem of the workshop teacher, but it also makes the attendees feel more comfortable. Um, one of the things we give away is plant starts, and this is one example of the partnership that we made. Um, we get the seeds. We give them to a local a city psychiatric center that has a board therapy program. They grow them out into vegetable starts and then we distribute them to the gardeners who can actually come to the psychiatric center and meet the clients who are in the program. So it's really a good way to get a lot of people from different backgrounds together. Um, this is, I'm not gonna go into this for very long, but this is basically the only reason why Green Thumb works. We're a very small program, we don't, have a lot of money, we don't make a lot of money, um, but because we work with a lot of not-for-profits, and because all of our gardeners are providing the labor to maintain these, these properties for free, it works. It creates a, a, a balance that I think it, it, it empowers the citizen gardeners, um, it helps the city to keep the program because nonprofits are also contributing funds, so they don't see it as a total handout. And um, by having it be a government accepted program, we have access to the city's land, which is actually the, probably the most valuable resource if you're talking about New York City real estate. Um, a lot of gardens grow food, and this is obviously a big interest these days with community gardens. And it, it, if you look at the map, it's basically that's where community gardens are, because 81% of them grow food. Um, so that's a very quick, brief overview of our program. I'm going to turn it over to Kenny to talk a little bit about your exciting last six months working for Great Fun. <laughs> Great. So I've been really lucky, lucky to have um, to have found a job. So um, early after graduation um, with the Green Thumb program, and it's been pretty much trial by rapid fire. You know. Um, there's been no training, um, <laughs> the least amount of guidance, but it's, there was no way of me finding the, the exact training that would make me you know, fit and um, adequate for this position that I'm in right now. I'm just in Manhattan riding my bike all over the borough, I'm going to community gardens all around, seeing what they need, um, how I can help them in whatever skill sets I have, and. Um, is expanding on my experience you know, with every community gardener and community garden I interact with. So, um, yeah, I think that's a great segue into what we're gonna do today um, about community gardening and how that kind of illustrates asset-based community development mapping. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Yeah, I would just say also, in my own defense, I am, I am a bad director for training, but that's exactly how I learned, and I think that benign neglect is kind of good. Because I, I didn't know, when I first started working with community guards, I didn't know any horticulture at all. I basically just squeaked my way into some job. And I learned everything that I learned from the gardeners, and actually, they know a lot more about doing horticulture in the bricks and rubble and junk that you have to deal with in New York than most of the botanic garden people do. So I think jumping right in is the way to get the soap. Let's jump right in, right? Let's do it. Okay, so what we want to do is um, we want you guys to be your group of people, right? You, want, you are going to build a community garden. You're going to start a community garden project. Let's go over here, right? Okay? You want to start with? I'm just going to draw this. Okay. Thing. Yeah. That side is going to be the width. 